What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinists. And today we've got something very special for you. We're here in Massachusetts at East Tech 2023. We're gonna be dropping in at some of my favorite vendors, checking out some of the latest offerings, and hopefully showing you guys around if you didn't get a chance to make it to the show. Let's go check this place out. The first spot here at ESEC I want to show to you guys is SW Machines. If you've seen some of our previous live streams, you know these guys are doing some of the craziest stuff when it comes to horizontal milling and high production. And no one is better to talk about it than my friend Kirk. Thank you very much for joining us today. Ian, you're joining me. Appreciate you coming. So what are we looking at here at ESEC? So this guy is our BA322i. This is our biggest moving machine here in North America. Why? Because we're helping our customers be more efficient with their manpower. We're helping them with their floor space and making really tough, difficult to machine parts, high volume type applications. This is for people who want to make thousands of parts a week. This is not for one-offs. This is high yeah, production Thousands stuff. of parts per week, per month. You know, it all depends on what your green light time is. Certainly we deal in automotive components where you're talking about times that are, you know, every 90 seconds you're popping out a part times two is 45. Other applications, we've got cycle times that are an hour, right? And just having that extended tool magazine, very difficult to machine, two parts at the same time, just kills it as far as the productivity and the quality. Because if you guys don't know, the reason he keeps saying two parts at the same time, this is actually a dual spindle machine. So it's making two parts instead of one with every cycle. Correct, correct. So this happens to be a two Two machine means two spindles and two tables. We'll speak about the workpiece exchange in regards to productivity next. Um, we also have four spindle machines. So when you do oh, really? have those components that have tolerances, which are maybe a little bit more open, we'll hit up four parts at the same time and really start pumping parts out. Uh, if you tie a few of those machines together, we have cells that are making uh, components and spitting out a component every five and a half seconds wow. when you add up that many spindles. And that's automated loading and unloading as well. So it takes the operator out of the equation, helps them do more with less. Absolutely. 80% of the machines that we sell are automated. That being said, this yeah, guy is, a has an integrated loading system. So on the back side of this robot, we have drawers that are fed in, allows you to uh, load up 12 drawers, depending on the component size. You can get probably eight hours of walk away time on there for wow. your machining. Robots taking your raw parts, putting them in the front table here. All this loading on the front side is done in parallel with the machining on the back side. So this table actually rotates in and out. So when one part's machining, it's reloading. Guy comes by once a shift to do some QA and reload it and exactly. it's good to go. We got a customer here in New England. They've got a dozen machines. They literally load it up. One guy mans 12 machines. And we have manpower issues today. Doesn't matter where you're in the nation. Doesn't matter what industry you're in. One guy, 12 machines, 24 spindles. I think that works. Sounds like a pretty good solution for it, if Very I had nice. to say. Now, what kind of tooling are you guys running in this right now? We're running horizontal, so we're running HSK in this? HSK 63, correct. And what's the advantage of running HSK compared to a you know 40 taper that so, someone may be used to? You know, HSK is gonna give you just a much more robust setup. You know, you you're, have both the face and taper contact. It's just much more rigid. That allows you to get better tool life, less vibration, much more stout package. And if people want to learn more about SW Machines, where can they go? www.sw-machines.com. And you guys will be at West Tech? Not going to be at West Tech this year. We'll see. So this is uh, the big year. We're going to have our big open house in September in New Hudson, Michigan. It's been the first one since COVID got done. So we're looking to have a really nice event. So if people September. want to check them out in person, come there. Always welcome to visit as well. Thank you very much, Kirk. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. going to drop in to visit somebody who you're probably going to recognize and that's my friend Tracking Pat from Track Machine Tools. Pat, how's it going? Hey, how are you, man? Good, sorry to interrupt you here. What are we looking at here from Track at ESEC? Well, we're, right now what I'm working on is uh, just putting a program in our knee mill line. You know, um, our, our main tool room line basically starts out with knee mills and retrofits for knee mills. Right. And then from there it goes into bed type mills, which are still open. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, of course, we have the lathes that work the same way. So the great part about it is they can all be used manually. 
and also all be used as CNC machines. You kind of get the best of both worlds. That's what you know Track's really known for. Exactly right. It's really been our heart and soul from the beginning. And this is what the Proto Track this KMX. Is the KMX. So the KMX actually started out as a uh, as an upgrade for some of our older models because we don't make our products obsolete. We like to try to keep them running for life. Right, and so uh, we started running out of components and we couldn't build, rebuild them anymore. So we made this to replace the electronics. And what exactly does this do compared to the older style track controllers? So it's really, it's a, it's a two axis CNC, right? So it's got fold out hand wheels. You can use it like a manual machine, right? And then when you put them away and you go into run mode, you're the Z axis. So it'll move over, say drill this hole now and you drill that hole, push go, it'll move to the next hole. So it's eliminating the rotary table, it's eliminating the time it takes to position and lock it in place. It does all that stuff at 100 inches a minute and it gets you through a prototype part really quick. And it's great for people who maybe don't have as much experience with NC programming. This is usually conversational, is it not? It's totally conversational. It will run G-code, okay? And with, uh, with certain um, options that we have for offline programming, you can also download DXF files parasolid files, anything like that. Program it right in the controller. Right, the one thing I would say that, you know, you really want to make sure people understand is even though it's super simple, it's super powerful. So because of that, it's really designed for the guy who's doing prototypes, small lots, one-offs, things like that. And it can do everything from a CAD system, but a lot of times you just don't need that. Don't even have to. A lot of times it's overkill. What else are we showing here at ESEC while we're here? Let's go this way. So this is the DPM RX-5. It's one of the four models of our DPMs, and the DPM is just short for dual purpose milling machine. Okay. So it can be used as a two axis machine like the knee mill, but it can also lock the quill and have the head do all the Z axis work. And so it can do full 3D oh. work. It can do full manual work. It can do full 2D work. So we're not just putting holes on a circle. You could do full 3D machining, Absolutely. ball nose, step over in a machine that you know people would assume is a manual mill. Yeah, our competition likes to tell people that they are only two axis, you can't do three axis stuff, but that's not really true. And you can very much so do that. And that uses that same kind of controller that we had on the other machine. Same kind, only this is the RMX, so the RMX is a much more powerful version of the same thing. So it's got a lot of extra things in there, like its own tool table, it's got uh, its capability to convert DXF files and parasol files right in the control without having to use a computer. Uh, it can do uh, more high-tech stuff like pockets that have bosses in them and things right. like that. that the simpler version doesn't have that capability. And if we have a chance to look at one more machine, what should we take a peek at here? I think we should just talk real gently about this. I know there's a lot of people there looking at it right now, but what this is, it's called a TMC. It's a tool room machining center. It's basically this machine enclosed with a tool changer. So still can be run manually with or without the tool changer, but you can close the doors, use the flood coolant, use oh. the CTS, and be able to keep the mess inside the machine. It's hard to see, but that actually does have handles on the outside. That's correct. To be able to run it manually. You're and not they're stuck, electronic. You're not stuck pendant jogging or anything correct. like that. To get the both of, the best of both worlds, to get it in both parts. And how many tools does that thing hold? 16. 16 tools. Yes. It's bigger than a lot of machines I've seen out there with that same capability. Right. Who's putting this kind of machine on the floor right now? Um, mostly you're gonna find them in job shops. You know, um, but there are some people that are doing like uh, just just pure proto track or proto track prototype work, such as doing tooling and fixtures and stuff like that. You know, there's also there's uh, this new trend you know that's coming around with with uh, all these companies that won't allow people to be running open machines, Big right? Time. And and yet they love using a proto track. So it's like okay, well, well now we have an enclosed proto track, and if you notice, there's a key switch on there, and that key switch, if you put it in tool room ops, you can run it with the doors open. But if you take it in production ops, pull the key out, now it has to be enclosed. As that safe gets around as possible. the safety part of it. So, well, so Pat, it thank both. you very much for joining us today. Where can people find out more about Track Machine Tools? Generally, just go to www.trackmt.com, which is for Track Machine Tools. And of course, everybody should check out your YouTube series. Yeah, so if you look at the YouTube series for that, you'll find us under Track Machine Tools. Um, and you can also find me by myself sometimes under Tracking Pat. Excellent. And so, one way or another, you'll find us. Thank you very much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Okay guys, so I have something special for our next stop here at East Tech. We're here with New England Tool Corporation with my friend Robert. Robert, hey. thank you very much for joining us today. Hey. How's it going? Now, I mean, when I think New England Tool, Tool Corporation, we obviously think Star Machines. Correct, yep. Yeah, so we've been a long-term Star dealer here in New England uh, for a lot of years, offering great product with the Star Machines, and now we're picking up other lines. And these are high-precision Swiss, high production, lots of parts, really fast. If you're doing it, 
these are the machines you want to Correct. do it in. Yep. And I see we have a few different sizes here. We so have. So we go from 10 millimeter, 26, and then we go up to 20 millimeter on the last machine over here. And I see iSwiss. We actually worked with iSwiss at one of the previous trade shows. They are together with you guys. Yeah, they were a sister company with iSwiss. Well, the same owner started both companies. So you guys handle not only the machines, but the tooling as well. Correct. That way we have a full offering to our customers. What happened in the past is we, our machines are great, but our tooling was bad. So we like, had to start a company for tooling. Take control of the full picture. Correct. And what do we have over here? These are the new lines that you guys are just bringing in right now. Yeah, so this Eurotech line we've had for uh, uh, several years. And our, another one of our sister companies is Robotic Advantage, where we can put robots on any machine here. So this is a Milturn lathe Eurotech. Uh, I'd say we've had this line six, seven years now. Very high precision, very rigid. Uh, great machine if you're doing some high-end mill turn work. And this is actually a package you could buy, not only for this machine, but you guys could put this style of package on uh, any machine, machines. any any model, any make. And I'm looking, I'm seeing 24 spots. I'm sure you could configure that any way you want. Yeah, every, every part has its own demand. So, you know, if you had a big widget, you might only need two or three. But if you're making some small stuff, you might need a couple hundred. You could fit 100 on that table, no problem. Correct. 100, 200. Yep. Now this thing, when it's done, it will go and load a new part, pull the finished one off, and put it back there for inspection. Put it in the tray, right, yep. And this is where it's all controlled right here. That's running a Mitsubishi system. Yep. That's interesting stuff. But the one thing I definitely want to take a peek at is this giant machine over here. I was told I have to see this. What are we looking at? So this is a Bridgeport XR1000 milling machine. This is a new line we just picked up. We're uh, very excited about it. They have mills and lathes, grinders, knee mills. Uh, they carry the Bridgeport name, which is highly known in the machining world. Anytime anybody sees a knee mill, they say it's a Bridgeport, no matter who made it. So very high, uh, high precision machine, another one. Yeah, I actually haven't got a chance to check out many of the Bridgeport you know, CNC centers. Obviously, I know the knee mills. Been using them for years, but this is actually a really interesting machine. Is that a FANUC controller? Yep, FANUC controller, HMI control. OIMF Plus. And that will have, how many tools will that thing hold? 30. Steve. 30 tools. 30 tools. Standards. Jeez. Now, there's one machine over there I definitely want to check out as well. What is that giant thing over there? So, this is our, the latest machine we just picked up. Uh, All's Metal. All's made in, Metal. All's Metal. Made in Germany. <laughs> high end. Uh, this machine is awesome oh, wow. here. Uh, Look at the size of that trunnion. It has a Heidheim control on it. Got to keep up with the pace of the machine. So this machine has one great big U casting in here. Very rigid. Oh, so all the way around. Oh, the whole way around, this wow. is rigid. So it keeps that trunnion in the middle very rigid. The, the tolerances don't move. You, you can run all day, keep the same, hold the same it's tolerance. It's not gonna have vibration problems, right. no growing, no shrinking. No, none. And that thing uh, has a huge footprint on it. Yeah, this is 100. We could we can have them from 400 up to uh, 1400 which 1400 is a 53 inch table. That's huge, for five axis. For five axis. That's huge, my biggest machine is 60 and it's three axis. Right. I can't imagine. So this this trunnion can go 140 each direction. So what they do is when they're done machining, they flip the part over, all the chips fall out. The, oh, because it will literally. Almost right. upside down. Has X, Y, and Z above, so and they're double box way, which makes it very rigid, uh, very precise. Uh, laser tool setter so you come oh. up with it come up with a laser it sets the thing thing dead no more broken probes right no more broken probes with just an eye and what kind of companies do you see putting this silent machine on the floor right now uh, what kind of industries a lot of aerospace you know making the big fins you know impellers that impellers, kind of stuff like companies that make parts for like ge probably big big parts and where, if we want to find out more about these machines and all the machines you carry, can we find out more information? On our website, uh, anytoolcorp.com. Search New England Tool on the internet. Go to any Alls Metal, Harding, Star, Eurotech websites. No matter what website. you need, you guys got it. Yep. Thank you very much yeah. for joining us today. No problem. Thank you very much. So the next place I have to show you guys is SMW Auto Block.
was walking by and I saw this here, and my friend Larry is going to help us out and tell us what we're looking at here. Larry, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having us. Now, what am I seeing here? It looks like a five-axis vise, but I'm seeing little grippers everywhere in here right now. Right. What makes us stand apart from other five-axis vise on the market, or what adds value to this vise, is a few things. It's a fully sealed vise, so no coolant, no swarf, no outside contaminants can get inside. The inserts are designed to grip apart and pull it down. So the, the way this is basically manufactured is the seat that the insert sits okay. in is ground. So the right. red inserts are nothing more than fillers. Okay. So where you're not using a pocket, you fill it so you don't damage so it. So you don't get dings and scratches right. in there. We have different, depending on the materials, we have different varieties of yeah. inserts, whether it be hard, uh, high speed steel, carbide, whatever the case may be. And basically what this allows you to do is where you see other vices on the market, you have to either pre-dimple your parts for it to accept the insert or accept the gripper, or you have to cut a dovetail of your part. Ours are self-dimpling. They create a pull-down effect. It pulls down onto this three millimeter ledge that allows you a very rigid, very accurate, very repeatable setup without a part ever having the opportunity to move. So we can have parts that sit much higher off the face of the vise. With no material prep with no material you stop it in and away you go and we actually have done internal testing and watch customers do testing well we'll have a part stand 12 or 14 inches off the face of a vice with that narrow of a foot and all we get is material deflection the part never shows any tear never actually movement. shifts absolutely not now this is something that looks like you guys are doing quite a bit of here because i see some more of these over here what's this is this the right. same idea basically it's just a larger version of that style vice the biggest difference is this has the ability to be a few different configurations in one. By taking standard components and either bolting them on this end or this end. Making it a single We travel. can make a single station vise. We could pull out our center jaw, slide in a dual sided a center jaw that also offers center grip and allows you to use it as a dual station vise. And you can work out your configuration where you have a smooth part. So if you notice, all of your center grip style jaws for this style vise have, a, have an insertable style face and then a smooth style face. So it's like off 10, off 20. You don't have to move your jaws or take your jaws off. You just slide and turn them around. And now I can do a rough machining port and a finished machining port all in the same vise. All in the vice. same spot. Right. And then we make different varieties of the same vise over and over and over again from vices that have the ability to have multiple setups, single setups. Big ones, small ones. Big ones, small ones. We go from an 88 millimeter all the way up to a 460 millimeter. So, so pretty much if you need it, you guys got it. Yes, and we cover the whole spectrum. And what do we got down here? I was taking a look at this earlier. It looks like some kind of computer system and I have no idea what it does. It's a wireless grip force meter that allows you to do static and dynamic grip force testing. So if you have a chuck, okay, and you start to have issues where your parts are moving or you start throwing parts, which is very, never very good. No. We have the ability to take this part, put in different little end effectors, excuse me, big fingers, little holes, and we can bolt these in position. So now I can take a three jaw chuck, depending on diameter, clamp it, and now I know my static grip force, which is grip force without rotation. Right. And that's what every work holding implement in the industry is based on a static grip force. So when you see a chuck, a 12 inch or a 10 inch chuck, that could exert 15,000 pounds of grip force, that's standing still. Once you go through a rotation on a standard chuck, you can lose up to 70% of your grip force. Right. So now you go from, and just to make numbers simple, 10,000 pounds to 3,000 pounds, you might start throwing parts. Which nobody wants. Right, never a good situation. But by having this, I can now give you a predictable outcome to your clamping um, situation without having to worry about, oh, I got to turn it off or I have a wire connecting. I can also take this out of the machine, close the doors on my machine, clamp this in the chuck, rotate at the RPMs I'm going to be, and know exactly, exactly the force I'm going to have. And I can store it and use it for future reference and it gives me grip force in kilonewtons or foot-pounds, RPMs, so I know how fast I was going and what my ability is to continue to go faster. You get all faster. that data that you can keep. Absolutely. And if people want to find out more about this and all the offerings that SMW Auto Block has, I mean, clearly you got some followers, we have hydraulic chucks, 
We have magnets. Where can people find out more about that? At our webpage at smwautoblocks.com. So it's www.smwautoblocks, without a C, in block.com. Larry, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, man. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'm joined by my friend Dimar. Good to see you again. Thank you very much for joining us today. We had to stop by. You know, you can't miss the yellow shoes. The branding is fantastic. What are we looking at here today? Yeah, I want to quickly give you an overview of what Zoll has to offer. This is basically a vertical storage cabinet, which is also one of our smart cabinets. In this uh, cabinet, you get, for example, 480 CAT 40 holders. 480? This, yes. Wow. In this little space. And uh, you can see weight wise, one drawer. 2,200 pounds. It's insane. I can't believe like you could fit two shops worth of tooling in there in some Co cases. Correct. Yes. Then on the right side we have our Redomatic 400, which is basically our combo preset a heat shrink. We are able to set to three, um, four tenths in accuracy. Very very accurate machine. So it's an all-in-one machine essentially. All, all in one. Yes. Especially if you're a small shop, you want to keep that footprint small. Yep. Don't have space for two machines. This does it all in one spot. Correct. And then when somebody wants to have it separate, the power shrink 600, where we basically keep shrinking and shrinking from we have a power shrink 400 as well as 600 entry type to high end. And this thing will do if we want to be uh, heat shrinking tools. You can have, these are the chillers, you can have five tools on this at a time. Yes. High production, lots of tools going out the door. Right. Beautiful. Then another beautiful machine, our tool balancer 550. Um, all the brand new, you are certified. Like I said to you, every shop should balance, be it high speed or, or you might be just roughing, or roughing operations. At the end of the day, either you improve the part quality, increase the tool life, and increase the spindle life. Basically, you're not only saving tool life, you're saving your machine wear and yep. tear. Correct. And what do we have over here? And then basically for <clears throat> tool manufacturer, regrinder, we have the Pom Basic Micro or the Pom Basic, I call it Toolmaker's Microscope. Everybody should have them in the shop. Make sure that your incoming tools are correctly grind to really verify the very powerful machine. And then last but not least, our 5-axis Genius. You can basically measure essentially every parameter which is on this kind of tools. 5-axis, what makes this machine 5-axis? The spindle is one CX. Um, then this way and the camera you're is getting a full wraparound view of that tool yeah and what Fully. kind of what kind of manufacturers or what kind of shops are putting this on the floor who needs that degree of accuracy um, essentially every tool manufacturer we I would say we own the market in this uh, this regards um, tool regrinder from smaller manufacturers to bigger as well as a lot of aerospace companies do have this kind of unit because their parts are so expensive they cannot allow if a tool is out of spec, they will destroy it at the end of the So not only are you helping the people who actually make the parts, you're helping the people that make the tools that yes. make the parts. Yes. And where can people find out more about Zoller if they want more information on all the things we just saw? Yes, at uh, myzoller.com. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you, Matthias. One of the big components of the show that maybe we don't always get to hear about is the educational component. There are students here, there are educators here, and we're actually joined by a few of them right now. Guys, would you mind introducing yourselves as we go around? Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Thomas Champagne. My name is Jack Sorno. I'm captain of First Team 155, the Technonuts. Uh, I'm Ryan Scarnuzzo. I'm uh, the design captain in Team 155, the Technonuts. And one of our educators down here. Uh, Mr. Damichi from Chicken Company Hampstead High School. And how many students did you guys bring with you to the show? So we brought, uh, today we brought nine, yesterday we brought another ten, and our also co-teacher, we brought another ten from our welding department. Oh, awesome. Now if we go down to the, some of the students, what's some of the coolest things you got to see here at the show during your time at East Tech? Um, I would say some of the coolest things I got to see during East Tech was like, all people from like around the world in different companies, such as like seeing people from different like types of trades within manufacturing, so say for like, laser precision to like patterns and filtering or whatever, water jets, CNC, five axis, four axis, three axis. It's just a great seeing all type of 
things that people love doing and absolutely you know, how they got there and if we pass it down a little bit what do you want to do after high school is manufacturing something you want to get into um that's an interesting question let's start with you brian all right so um it's definitely, uh, I'm only a sophomore so far, um, but it's definitely on my list of potential, you know, careers that I would um, be uh, interested in going into. Excellent. I'm more on the programming side myself, but in manufacturing, pretty much everything as we start digitizing uh, is going to require some of that software aspect. So. I could find myself in a career like that. And there are much worse places to be, believe me. This is a fantastic trade to get involved in. Yep. Now, when you're dealing with, with students and helping teach them, bring them to a show like this, what kind of activities have you guys been doing with SME? So, uh, for today, we play kind of like a, a small scavenger hunt where they were going to go to uh, shops and little booths and stuff, answer three questions, and just interact with anybody around there, right? So that way they could experience about other stuff that we can't teach them in our high schools. And um, from even just something as simple as the, a holding tool that we can't afford because, you know, you're in high school, right? We're talking millions and millions of dollars, right? Um, they're able to experience it and just find themselves like seeing what other areas of manufacturing they could get into. It's a great exposure to get to see definitely. what's out there, you know, beyond maybe what we get exposed to on a daily basis. Yeah, yes, definitely. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Enjoy the rest of your show. Thank you. Thank, right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure. So now that we've had a chance to talk to these students and educators involved in the program, we actually are lucky enough to be with Rob right now, who coordinates everything there. What's your role with SME? I uh, have the pleasure of serving as the vice president of the SME Education Foundation, which is the philanthropic arm of SME. And what are the programs you guys are running here? I saw something about Prime. Good question. So uh, the, the, the mission of the foundation is to inspire, prepare, and support the next generation of manufacturing and engineering talent. Right. And we, we execute on that mission through the delivery of three programs, Prime being our signature program. Essentially what we do with Prime is we partner private industry, manufacturers with academia, specifically high schools, to build custom manufacturing and engineering programs inside of high schools, and we do this across the country. We're in 93 schools across 23 states. 93? 93. So you're getting involved with the students before they even have a chance to go into the workforce, helping to educate them, help getting them involved in manufacturing. Correct. In fact, every program is tailored to meet the needs of the local manufacturers, ensuring that the students that are going through the program are learning skill sets and they're graduating with certifications that employers in their community have told us on the front end this is what we need more of. And I know basically very little about the program but one thing I did hear is that not only are there some certifications there's something like 30 certifications. 30 plus certifications. There are seven different pathways that we that we teach to through Prime so it's dependent upon the pathway but yes all in collectively of 35 different certifications. And if most of which are industry certifications so SME provides a couple certifications, a handful of certifications, but most of the certifications that we align to are through NIMS or American Welding Society or some of the uh, industry recognized credentials that the manufacturers themselves are familiar with. So this isn't just a fancy piece of paper. They can take it and go get work with it. It 100%. transfers on. Yep. And if educators, teachers want to get more involved with this program, where can they find more information? Uh, www.smeef.org, S-M-E-E-F, SME Education Foundation. SMEEF.org. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we have a special little treat for you right now. We were here at East Tech and we ran into my friend Steve from the American How Precision Museum. Thanks guys. Come I'm by. sure you guys remember the video we did. If you have not seen it, you have to check it out. Steve takes us through <laughs> 2021, the American Precision Museum. But there's some things that have changed since we visited. Yeah, it's really an exciting time. We've updated the entire front end of the exhibit to really tell the story about how products were made by hand and now they're being made by machine. And the next piece of the exhibit that's going in uh, June 12th will be how we've gone from made, uh, machines that make parts to now machines that make machines. And we'll highlight the events of the Crystal Palace uh, exhibition in London. And of course, one of the favorite things everybody sees there is the Bridgeport number one. But you were telling me there's actually something else that's yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, the Bridgeport number one is great. But uh, recently we acquired uh, Rudy's personal Bridgeport that's unserialized. So it's pre number one now. 
And we also found out that Bridgeport uh, produced belt buckles for a little while. And we've got two out of 2,000 now at the museum. American so, made stuff. All American made, American people. All great. And for those who all haven't great. gotten a chance to check out the video or the Precision Museum yet, what's one of your favorite parts about the Precision Museum? Oh, I think it's inspiring the next generation of makers and builders and so forth. I just love seeing fourth, fifth, sixth grade kids come in, make something, build something, put the electronic devices down, and you know the, the smiles on their face when they show their parents what I just made is priceless for the museum. And for those of you guys who don't know, not only do they have you know the historical stuff, you guys have manufacturing from the beginning, beginning right. all the way up to modern yeah, stuff. Right, the American Precision Museum is the birthplace of modern, uh, the American system of manufacturing. That's also the beginnings of the machine tool industry as well. Uh, but we take it all the way up to, you know, we have a vertical CNC from Haas with a Mitoco pallet changer. We just bought, got a, a TL1 from Haas in there now, CNC lathe, we've got 3D printers, we've got robots from both Fanuc and, and uh, Universal, so we're, we can tell the whole story. A little bit of everything. It's great, it's great. Now if people want to come check out the American Precision Museum in person, where are you guys located? We're located in Windsor, Vermont. Uh, we're about an hour and a half from Bradley Airport. And if people want to find out more online, where can they find you? AmericanPrecision.org. Thank you very much, sir. Great Thank to see you. you. Take care. There you have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed our coverage of ESEC 2023. It was great to get out there and see everybody back together, you know, after how the last few years have been. These shows are really, really cool to check out, you know, both the educational components, it's cool to check out new technology. If you have not been to a show yet this year, I highly recommend it. We're actually gonna be at West Tech as well, so if you're there, make sure you come and say hello. Thank you very much for watching guys, and as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. You take care.